When the sun turns the island into a furnace, when the land cracks and every part dries up, though even the king must bow. This is the Komodo dragon, a 200 pound male, ruler of this arid land. But today, he is weak. He is cornered, not by a rival, but by the thirst. He must venture. His survival instinct draws him toward the only hope, a place where he is not king. A brackish swamp, a mangrove forest, a whole other world, stuffy, wet, and full of mysteries. This was the border between life and death. Komodo entered cautiously. Every step was calculated. It knew it was trespassing. Because this kingdom has a tyrant, a predator older, greater, awaits. Under the water, a movement, a live torpedo, came, the entire swamp exploded. Water, mud, and 500 kilograms of muscle shot up from the bottom. The Komodo dragon didn't have a chance to react. It only had time to lift its head. The bite locked. The crocodile's jaws clamped tightly around the Komodo dragon's foreleg. The Land King was captured. The Komodo struggled violently. It clawed at the mud, trying to hold on. But in this territory, it was just prey. The crocodile began its death ritual. It dragged the dragon away from the shore and began the spiral of death. just for a second, gasping for air. Desperate, the crocodile paused. It needed to recalibrate its grip. It loosened its jaws, just for a millisecond. And that was a mistake. The Komodo dragon, using all its remaining strength, tried to bite back, it turned and sank its serrated teeth into the crocodile's snout. A defensive bite, but a fatal bite. A mixture of venom and bacteria had been injected. It crawled up the mud bank, dragging its body its front leg was crushed. Blood stained the mud. The crocodile roared silently. It lunged again, but missed. On the land, among the mangrove roots, it was clumsy. Two kings looked at each other. The Komodo dragon was badly injured. The saltwater crocodile was bitten. The battle was over. The Komodo dragon, exhausted, dragged itself away into the mangrove forest. It was the loser. Twenty-four hours passed. The crocodile lay motionless at the water's edge. 
The bite mark on its snout was swollen. It was starting to weaken. Fever was setting in. It was convulsing. Its armored hide could block the bite, but its blood could not stop the Komodo's venom. The anticoagulant, the shock, was destroying the king of the marsh from the inside. Three days later, the swamp tyrant was dead. He was floating in his own kingdom. And then, from the darkness of the mangroves, the defeated returned. The Komodo dragon still limped, its front leg badly injured, but it was a survivor. It approached the corpse of its enemy and began its feast, eating the very man who had nearly killed it. Komodo dragon, covered in mud and blood, stood tall beside the dead saltwater crocodile. The eyes of the Komodo dragon, cold, patient, and victorious. The Komodo dragon, full of food, raised its head above the carcass of the saltwater crocodile. Komodo dragon climbed ashore, covered in mud, victorious. In the brutal war between two kings, brute force won the battle, but venom and patience won the war.